Hello, this is Ron Clark, bringing you Lesson 8 of the Self-Healing Archaeus, in which I will discuss techniques of mental wandering. This lesson is suitable only for those who have mastered Lesson 6. There are three degrees or types of mental wandering. The first is when the solitary mental body is separated from the astrophysical shell. The second is when the astromental body is first separated from the physical shell, and then the solitary mental body is separated from the astral shell. The third and final degree is when, having performed the separation of astromental from physical, and then solitary mental from astral, the fire region of the mental body is separated from the air region of the solitary mental body. The first degree of wandering is what Franz Bardon described in Step 8 of Initiation into Hermetics. By this method of separating the solitary mental body directly from the astrophysical shell, one reveals a purple cord that represents what's left of the conjoined earth and water regions of the mental body. With this degree, one's perceptions can range from purely mental to astral, and the integration of perceptions by the solitary mental body into the emotional context is very easy. This degree is most suitable for wandering of the present moment, one's physical environs, other places on earth, and so on. This is the precursor state for the astral wandering technique that Bardon taught in Step 9 of Initiation into Hermetics. In the second degree of wandering, one first separates the astromental body from the physical shell, revealing the silver cord, which is just the deflated earth region of the mental body. Then one separates the solitary mental body from the astral shell, revealing the violet cord instead of the denser purple cord, and this is the deflated water region of the mental body. This provides for a deeper separation of the solitary mental body and is more suitable for purely mental perceptions that involve the integration of direct perception of essential meaning with thought. It is possible to quickly integrate the mental perceptions into the emotional level, but this is not automatic and therefore requires intention. It is also an easy matter to draw the astral shell to the solitary mental body and revert to astromental wandering from this state. This second degree is the most suitable for a finer mental examination of the present moment, one's physical environs, etc., but more importantly, it's the best for exploring the higher planes or planetary zones. However, the conjoined air and fire regions of the solitary mental body cannot travel much beyond the zone of Jupiter and can only penetrate to the edge of the abyss. In other words, the solitary mental body is a creature of the sequential realm, and as such, cannot enter into the non-sequential realm of eternity. Only the fire region of the mental body can navigate the abyss between the sequential and eternal realms. Which brings me to the third and final degree of mental wandering, separation of the fire region from the solitary mental body. One starts from the second level, and then separates the fire region of the mental body from its integration with the air region. This reveals a crystal clear cord, which is all that remains of the air region, when one's awareness is totally focused within just the fire region. With this degree, there is only the direct perception of essential meaning and being. These perceptions can be periodically integrated into the air region of thought, but this requires an act of will, which removes one from the totality of focus within just the fire region. The fire region is like a flame, always reaching upward and outward. Thus the integration of the direct perceptions of the fire region into the air region requires a turning away from what one is directly perceiving. Consequently, this interrupts the continuity of one's perceptions, and one must then return to an exclusive focus upon and separation of the fire region. Only the fire region of the mental body is capable of directly perceiving and merging awareness with the eternal mental body. This is the highest degree of Bardon's emptiness or vacancy of mind exercise from step one of initiation into hermetics. 
At the level of step one, the student is focusing their awareness within the fire region of their mental body. This is the region of direct perception of essential meaning and a state best described as being. Here there is no thinking, only perceiving and being. However, with the step one exercises, this all takes place while the three bodies are still fairly integrated. In effect, the fire region is connected by a very fat, very dense cord that represents the combined earth, water, and air regions of the mental body. This generates a lot of background noise, so to speak, that one doesn't realize is there until one has experienced the deeper quiet and greater control that comes from first separating the solitary mental body. As the student deepens their emptiness of mind state through continued practice, the cord connecting the fire region becomes thinner and clearer, thus revealing the various levels of mind in succession. First the layers of the brain-bound mind, then the emotion-bound mind, then the thinking-bound mind, and finally revealing the perceiving mind. It is possible, given a lot of persistent practice and perhaps an exceptional gift of native talent, to reach a state in which the cord connecting the fire region to the combined earth, water, and air regions attains a crystal clarity. But for most folks, that takes a long time. By separating the three bodies first, and then separating the fire region from the air region, one can reach the deepest state of emptiness of mind possible. However, a lesser degree of emptiness, but one that is still superior to the step one exercise, can be achieved by first separating the astromental body from the physical shell, and then separating the fire region from the astromental body leaving behind a conjoined water and air astromental shell. This results in a translucent yellow-gold cord through which the fire region can quickly integrate its direct perceptions into the water and air aspects of the mental body. Although this still means a periodic interruption of the emptiness state and of direct perception, it does take considerably less time to clarify the translucent yellow-gold cord to a crystal-clear state. Since it would obviously be impossible for me to lead you through these practices, I will now simply outline the method for each degree of mental wandering. Surely you will be able to apply this outline to your personal practice. Degree 1. Begin with the elemental balancing and integration of all three bodies as instructed in Lesson 6. Once your three bodies are fully reintegrated, separate your solitary mental body from the astrophysical shell. Perceive the purple cord and then investigate your surroundings. Just as with my instructions vis-a-vis -vis astromental wandering in Lesson 7, you must verify the accuracy of your perceptions after each session. Begin by wandering very close to your astrophysical shell and then, over time, venture further and further afield. Practice integrating the perceptions of your solitary mental body into your astrophysical body during your wandering. Upon completion of your mental journey, carefully and thoroughly reintegrate into your astrophysical shell. Travel from one place to another is caused by formulating a clear intention to travel to your chosen destination. For example, if you wish to visit with a friend in another country, you would formulate the strong intention to do so. Travel to other planes or zones is caused by intention and by consciously harmonizing the solitary mental body with the vibration of the chosen zone. For example, if you wish to visit an elemental kingdom, you would formulate the intention and then fill your solitary mental body with the relevant element. Degree 2 Begin with the elemental balancing and integration of all three bodies as instructed in Lesson 6. Once your three bodies are fully reintegrated, separate your astromental body from the physical shell. Perceive the silver cord and then separate your solitary mental body from the astral shell. Perceive the violet cord and then investigate your surroundings. 
As always, you must later verify the accuracy of your perceptions after each session. Begin by wandering very close to your astral and physical shells, and then, over time, venture further and further afield. Practice integrating the perceptions of your solitary mental body into your astral body during your wandering. Upon completion of your mental journey, carefully and thoroughly reintegrate into your astral and physical shells. The same methods of travel apply as in Degree 1. Degree 3 Begin exactly as in Degree 2. Once your three bodies are separate, focus your awareness exclusively within the fire region of your solitary mental body. Perceive the essential meaning of your separation from the air region and perceive the essential meaning of the crystal clear cord that connects you with it. Isolate your awareness to just the fire region, to just perception and being. Travel with the fire region of the mental body is also a matter of intention and of playing with the mental realm law of like attracts like. However, one must introduce this intention prior to separating the fire region from the air region. The intention of where one wishes to travel is very strongly formulated within the solitary mental body just prior to focusing the awareness exclusively within the fire region. At this point an element, fluid, or colored light may be condensed within the solitary mental body. All of these actions create a strongly focused crystallization of the mental materia which serves as the anchor point to which your target is attracted, and vice versa, which is equally attracted to and by your target. As you and your target converge on the mental plane, you focus exclusively within the fire region and separate from the air region. This places your fire region at or in your mental target. In other words, you aim your fire region and then release it. If you are exploring the mental plane level of your immediate physical surroundings with the solo fire region, then it will take a fair amount of experience to verify them later with your physical eyesight. But by this point, you should be very sure of the reliability of your mental senses. During your experiments with the solo fire region, you should periodically integrate your perceptions into the air region. If necessary, completely reunite with the air region and then integrate your thoughts into the water region from there, as this gives a greater assurance that you will remember them clearly at a later time. Ultimately, the transition between being in the solo fire region and then integrating with the air region and then separating the solo fire region again should become very fluid and rapid. With practice, one also learns how to propel the solo fire region after its separation from the air region. This is accomplished through a process of opening oneself to what is perceived as opposed to intending what one conceives. For example, one has aimed for and arrived at the lunar zone, but now wishes to ascend from there to the mercury zone. What is required is an opening of the self to the direct perception of the essential meaning of the mercury zone vibration. Ultimately, one can open to realms that the sequentialized solitary mental body is incapable of aiming at, simply because it cannot fully conceive of them. The solo fire region, however, is capable of perceiving what the sequentialized consciousness cannot conceive of. For example, when the solitary mental body is filled with the akasha prior to separation of the fire region, and the intention of merging with one's own greater self is very strongly formulated, this will aim the fire region towards the eternal mental body. Once separated, the fire region then perceives the greater self, and then must open itself to the greater self, and then fully expend its fire as a radiance that fills and becomes at one with the greater self. 
This same method can also be used to merge with a chosen deity form, to explore specific facets of the primal causality, and so on. With any wandering done with the solo fire region, very great care should be taken in the subsequent process of reintegrating the four regions and three bodies. Spend several moments or minutes if necessary integrating the fire and air regions very thoroughly. Take your time with this integration of your perceptions into your thinking mind. Likewise, thoroughly integrate the solitary mental body with the astral shell and let all those thoughts settle into the level of your emotional perceptions. And just as thoroughly, reintegrate your astral mental and physical bodies. Affix the memory of the perceptions, thoughts, and feelings from your mental journey into your mundane awareness. This ends Lesson 8 of the Self-Healing Archaeus. I hope that these techniques help you to unveil the eternal splendor of the limitless light by serving to facilitate and encourage your own explorations of our infinite universe with all its many wonders. My best to you.